So first, let's talk about quickly the data I'm using as a data source. So I got six different Excel files, but this is actually two years worth of sales data. So I'm having one file which includes the product code and product cost, another one with the product price. The third one includes the actual sales data with the sold quantity. The next three files are covering the, the other year. Let's have a quick look what we have inside the files. So I'm going to open up the code and cost file. And as you see, I got two sheets with two different tables. One table includes the product code and the product name. The other one includes only the product name and the cost each. The price file includes only one table and one sheet with the product name and the sell price each. And the last one includes my actual sales data. But this table includes only the date of sales, the product code and the actual quantity was sold. And now I'm going to connect all these data sources into one single pivot using Power Query. And I'm going to show you a trick how you can and actually filter the data sources and not the data what we import and I'm going to name this field as year selected so this is going to be the value we are using to filter our data source and I simply just go to the data tab hit data validation and I'm going to choose the list this time we got two years worth of data 2023 2024. Let's add the border. And as you see, I got two values in my drop down list. Let's select 2023. I leave my selection on this cell. I go to the formulas tab and I'm going to actually name this range. So I hit the name manager, hit new, the name I like, year selected, cell value good. I hit OK. I can close the name manager, then I go to the data tab and I hit from table and range. This is going to import the value from that range. But since I don't want to use it as a table or range, but as a variable, first I'm going to format the value to use as text or string. Of course, replace the current value. I select the actual cell, right click and hit drill down. We got a variable. And now let's import the data sources. Instead of pulling them one by one, I'll show you another way. I go File, Folder. I'm going to browse to the folder where I have the data. I select the folder, hit Open. The Power Query read the content of that folder. I hit Transform Data, and here we are. My table is named as the folder was named and it's called data points now. I like it, I don't want to change that. And as you see, the Power Query read the content of the folder we can see the binary data for each file. And since I'm using a consistent way to name my files, it's easy to filter because the first four digit means the year. What I do, I simply just select the name column. I hit add column. I choose the add column of the ribbon and I'm going to extract the first characters. It's going to ask how many characters I want to extract. In this case, it's four. Hit OK. And I extracted the year value. The column is named as first characters. I don't like it. I'm going to use the M code editor to replace the name and let's say data point year. Hit enter, done. Then I just simply use the filter button. I'm going to select one value, let's say 2024, hit OK. And in the M code editor, instead of using a static data to filter the year, I'm going to remove that value and I'll start typing the name of the variable I just created, the year selected. Once that's done, I simply hit enter and it's going to pull the value from the variable. So we are filtering our data point with a simple drop down. And since I have all the data points imported to the Power Query, I don't have to import any file anymore. I just need to reference the original query I created. So I'm going to right click on the data points query hit reference and I'm going to name it as product code because as I showed you this file includes two tables and I just simply filter on the name column saying if the text contains the word code then leave that row there and now I need to get the actual content of the Excel file so we need to extract the binary content the only thing I do I simply just right click on the content column and I choose remove other columns because I don't need anything else from now, just the content. Once that's done, I go to the add column tab, hit custom column and I'm going to name my custom column as Excel content. And we are going to use a magical M function called Excel.workbook. I open the brackets and I need the name of the field that includes my binary data and that's the content field. I close the brackets, 
hit OK. There we go. Now the Power Query was able to extract the content of that binary data. If I select the table field, then you can see that what table is included in that binary data. And I simply just expand the content. And as I said, we got two different tables in that file. But since Power Query is reading the entire content, you have an option to choose the actual object, which is a table or the entire sheet. But obviously, I don't want to read the entire sheet, but only the table. So I filter in the table under the kind column and under the item column, I'm going to use the text filter again and saying contains bird code. And there we go. We found the proper table we want to work with. And now I just simply remove every other column I don't need anymore. So I simply select the data column, remove other columns, and then I can expand the content. And the data has been pulled by the Power Query. The last thing I'm going to do, I select all the columns, I go to the Home tab, Data tab, and I choose Text, because this type of data is a string, and I'm going to just simply repeat the process for all the tables I want to work with. Right-click on the Data Points, Reference, and this time I want to get the Product Cost, Contains Word, cost, remove other columns, add column, custom column, Excel content, magical Excel M function, open brackets, field name, hit OK, expand the content, filter on the object type, we choose table, again we look for the cost table, word cost, select the data field, right click, remove other columns, expand, and then just format it. This one is going to be a text, and this is currency. If you don't want to add the custom column name added to the expanded field, you just need to choose an option when you expand it when you are at this step. So when I created the new query for the price file, I hit expand, and I need to uncheck this box. And I simply just repeat my process. And we are done. I'm going to format this as a date. We are on the actual sales table. Product code is a text and quantity sold is a whole number. So now let's load everything to the data model. Since I created everything within the query window, it will load everything at the same time. I go to the home tab, hit close and load, close and load to only create connection and add this to the data model. Hit OK and done. I'm going to remove the data points from the data model because we simply just don't need it. Then I either choose the data tab, manage data model, or I can choose the power pivot tab and hit manage. And I'm going to build a pivot table to calculate some values from these tables. But before I would do that, I need to connect them. And from the data view, I'm going to choose the diagram view under the home tab. First, I'm going to organize my table a little bit. And since my product code table includes the individual product codes I can use to gather all the data, I'm going to connect all these fact tables to my product code tables. And I'm going to use this one to create a power pivot. From the product cost table, I will just simply drag and drop the product name to the product code. On the sold quantity table, I got the product code. So I'm going to connect with the product code and the product name again from the price table. I can even remove the year selected table. For now, I simply just close the data model. Year selected, right click, load to, remove, add this to the data model, hit OK, going back. And now we are going to choose the product code table and choose pivot table. Existing worksheet, let's say C5. So I'm going to use the product code table as a default and I'm going to pull the product code as a row and the name as well. I go to the design tab and I change the layout to tabular. I don't need the subtotals and we don't need blank rows. And normally we could choose any value from these tables because these are connected. So let's say I'm moving the date field to the columns. I leave the month date only there. And let's say the quantity sold and I use a basic default function, the sum in that pivot. And it seems like we are done. But what if I want to use a more complex calculation rather than just sum up the actual sold quantities? Since this data includes the price and cost information, we can calculate profit. But how can we do that? I select the pivot table, hit pivot table analyze. I need to display the fields and I'm going to create a measure using DAX directly from the power pivot field. My default table is the product code. I'm going to select, right click, 
hit add measure i'm going to name my measure first profit dollar and let's learn a few things about the measure so measures can perform only calculation so whenever you create a measure within a power pivot you can place only under the values and it can perform again just calculation what does that mean we cannot really do vlookups pulling strings or tags as a result but we can use them as a variable inside our measure so in order to calculate the profit and the cost first i have to calculate what was the total cost against the total sold quantity and the same for the price and the total price minus the total cost will will result as the profit right so the first thing i'm going to do is to create a variable and the index is start like this var the name of the variable and obviously i have to pull the cost each for each product and in this case, I'm going to use the lookup value functions, which is similar to the VLOOKUP, but it can use multiple conditions, but it works only with unique values. The first attribute is the result column name. So when I start typing the cost each, then it will bring me up the findings, and I want to get back the result as the cost each from the product cost table. The next attribute is my search column. Same table, product cost, and I'm choosing the product name because my default table has the product name and the product cost table includes only the product name. So that's going to be the key. And this is what we connected in the data model too. So I'm going to select the product name, comma, and the search value is going to be the value in my pivot table. But I cannot just simply enter the name of the column which includes that value I need to use a function selected value. This function will utilize the row items from my pivot table. And now I can enter the product name field from my default table, which is the product code table. I need to use a double brackets to close my formula. And one variable is done. Shift enter and I can start a new variable in a new line. And that's going to be the price each. The logic is the same. We have to pull and find the price each information per the row items. So look up value again. Result column is the product price table, sell price each field. Search column, again, this table includes only just the product name, comma, selected value. And the product name field from my pivot table. So product code, that was my default table double brackets shift enter now i got two variables already and i'm going to create the last one which is going to be the quantity sold because we have to sum up the actual sold quantity and that's very simple i'm saying sum the sold quantity on the sold quantity table shift enter and in order to get the value from variables in dax you have to use a magical word return so we want to return some values. We cannot just simply say that I want to use the variable formulas because DAX expects me to use those variables. And I said, I want to create the profit, open brackets, and the profit calculation will look like this. I'll start typing the name of the variable I created in DAX, which is the price each this time, select times by the quantity sold, close the brackets and now we got the total sales value per the row items but i want to get the profit so i need to deduct the actual cost so minus open brackets cost each variable times by the quantity sold variable if you want to check your formula you simply just hit this button and it says the formula has no errors. I'm going to hit OK. There we go. We have created our measure. If I navigate to my default table, I can see the measure I created. What I'm going to do, I simply just remove the value field I added already. And I'm going to just simply drag and drop my measure under the values. And there we go. We've got the profit calculation in our pivot. I'm going to just simply select the field, format, and we are done. We are calculating the profit for a specific year. If I change the year of the data and I go to the data tab, hit refresh all, it is going to update my queries and the values are going to be updated in the pivot too. There we go. If I want, I can even insert a slicer using the date field and I can start digging to my data. If I want to pull only a quarter, then I select that option, quarter two, 
and this is going to bring me back the Q2 data. If you wish to add more information to your default table, like you want to see the actual price each or cost each, you simply just go back to your data model, you select the default table, let's say I'm going to add the cost each information and we are going to use a simple lookup value function. Lookup value result should be the cost each, search column the product name, search value the product name on my table. Select close angle brackets, hit enter. Let's do the same for the price each, lookup value, sell price each as a result, name as search value and product name on my product code table as a search value. Once it's done, I can hit Ctrl S, Ctrl Save. I go to the Analyze tab, Field List. And if I open up my default table, I see the new columns I added. And I simply just drag and drop the new values under the row field. And there we go. We can see the actual cost each and price each information on my pivot table. I hope you like this video and I will see you next time.